The Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act um, comes into effect on the 1st of July for all the jurisdictions that have signed up um, to the intergovernmental agreements. Um, here in Cayman, we are still waiting for our implementation legislation to actually be enacted to actually bring the intergovernmental agreements um, into local legislation. Um, we've been told um, that the legislation is expected um, to be enforced by the end of May, um, but what we're waiting for at the moment is just for drafts of the regulations, the guidance notes, um, and the first draft of the implementing legislation to be released by the Tax Information Authority so that we can all see exactly what is what um, and what is, what is happening with um, the legislation and how it will relate to Cayman and Cayman entities. It will be very helpful to have that legislation in place because we've got a few questions that we need answered about how we translate this US legislation um, into Cayman law and apply it to Cayman vehicles. Um, so as soon as we have that legislation, everyone will know exactly what they have to do and can get on with registering with the IRS and can really get their back compliance programs in place and start doing what they need to do in order to comply. So one of the issues that's been causing a lot of debate here in, in Cayman, and particularly amongst legal firms who have to advise on this point, um, is the responsible officer role and how that will impact Cayman financial institutions. The Ministry of Financial Services issued their bulletin a couple of months ago now saying that the responsible officer role would not be imported into Cayman Islands law. Um, but there's still a bit of a mismatch um, between that statement and the way you have to register on the IRS portal to obtain your GIN number. Um, because there is a slot where you do have to say who the responsible officer is going to be. We understand from the Tax Information Authority um, that the responsible officer needs to just be a point of contact. The person who is um, going to liaise with the Tax Information Authority if they have any questions um, in relation to the financial institution. Um, and so it isn't the full-on US reg definition of responsible officer with all the implications that it has. Um, so that was a helpful clarification issued by the Tax Information Authority. Um, one thing we are looking at, though, is whether the responsible officer will be an officer of a company but in, in traditional Cayman Islands law um, terms, so whether they will need to appear um, on the register of directors and officers. Um, we understand that isn't the case and that filings won't need to be made for Cayman law purposes, but again, there's a bit of conflicting advice coming kind of from US law firms on this issue at the moment, so um, we're trying to get to the bottom of that to see how it pans out. In terms of what Cayman financial institutions need to do at the moment, um, a lot of entities are gearing up to register on the IRS portal in order to obtain their GIN numbers. Um, there was um, a bit of back and forth about when Cayman institutions would actually need to do this by, and a lot of rumour going around that the April 25th deadline date, everyone would have to have a GIN number by then. Um, but thankfully, the, the US issued a very helpful announcement that clarified that if you're in a Model 1 jurisdiction, you have until the 31st of December to register to obtain your GIN number, and that you can self certify um, until the end of the year if needs be. Whilst a lot of people are keen to get on the first IRS list and get their GIN numbers, um, again, we're tending to advise that people wait to hold on until the Cayman legislation comes out, and it's only if counterparties are causing problems, threatening to close accounts and so on, that, that perhaps you need to expedite that registration process. I think a question that a lot of people have been asking is why Cayman needs to comply with FATCA. We're not another tax jurisdiction, at least there are no direct taxes here. And so a lot of people have the view that the FACA is obviously overlaying a lot of extra burden, a lot of extra responsibility on Cayman Islands financial institutions. Um, I think that there's lots of reasons why we need to comply. Cayman is obviously one of the largest financial centres in the world. Um, FATCA now has global reach, all the governments are signing up FATCA equivalent type agreements. And it's very important that Cayman stays at the forefront of the information exchange that is required pursuant to these agreements. From our perspective, I think that was something that Cayman can do really well. We know already who owns most of the, most of the shares, most of the interest, and all the money that flows into this jurisdiction. We know who the beneficial owners are because we have one of the most stringent anti-money laundering regula regulation regimes anywhere in the world. And therefore, we have a lot of the information that, that is required to be reported under FATCA. And whilst it's been an admin exercise to chop and, and change that data into the form of reporting that is required, we actually have the information which puts it as a, at a great advantage to a lot of other jurisdictions. The other main point, I think, is, is it really does stress that, that Cayman is very open. There is nothing to hide here. Um, we are often targeted with people who don't know any better and claim that this is a jurisdiction for the dirty money to come. That simply isn't the case. We will be open, we are transparent, and we will share the information that other governments need, which is a real plus for this jurisdiction and, and will hopefully silence those people that, that try and suggest otherwise. 
One big advantage for Cayman and Thacker is it has really opened up opportunities for local service providers to add and expand their service offerings and there are some great um, offerings out there for um, the local providers who really have stood up to the challenge of trying to create products that will be helpful for international investors coming on, onto the island and to show that Cayman is a one-stop shop which helps support the financial services industry long term. Um, in terms of going forward, a lot of the jobs that will be created from FATCA, there will be a lot of additional work to be done here. There's a big admin role that's attached to a FATCA compliance program and these jobs tend to be things that, that suit school leavers really well because a lot of it is just getting to grips with large volumes of paper, it gives them an intro and a silo into the financial services industry, you can start doing FATCA compliance and then perhaps move on to more general compliance and then really launch into that whole fund administration financial services industry. So hopefully it should provide a lot of opportunities for, for the young generation coming out of school, um, good jobs, good prospects and, and proper careers.